Father God, because you are worthy, we enter into this place to lift every praise. Lord, we say we come with hearts filled with thanksgiving. God, you gave us another day that was not promised. And Father, for that we say thank you. Father, you gave us the activity of our limbs and you gave us a reasonable portion of our mind, Father God, and our hearts were stayed on Jesus, so we say thank you. God, we thank you because we can call you our Father. You are the Almighty, the one and only, the true Father, and we say thank you. Oh Lord, we say we love you, Father. We magnify you. We glorify you today. God, we just thank you for those who have assembled, those who thought it not worthy to stay home, Lord, but to come out to be among the saints, to lift up your name in praise and worship. So God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that your spirit would hover, Lord, throughout this place, from the door where others are welcome in, throughout the pews, to the pulpit, the choir, and Father God on the instruments. Let us, Lord, be led by your spirit, not by self, not by performance, but all that we do in lifting up the name of Jesus. For you said, Lord, uh, if I be lifted up, <laughs> I'll draw all men unto me. So, Father, help us to be lifters of the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the lifter of our head. For those who are downtrodden this morning, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask God that you send them your spirit of comfort, that they feel your spirit of love. Father God, in this place, be lifted up today. Be glorified today. Be glorified in this place today. Lord, we thank you. Oh, Father, we magnify you. God, we are thankful most of all for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and for the Sustainer, our Guide, your Holy Spirit. Father God, uh, troubling times now are uh, trouble on every hand, and God, we need a word uh, from on high. <laughs> So, Father God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus uh, that you send forth your preacher, Lord. Uh, let the word that we need on this day come forth. And then, Lord, let us not only be hearers of your word, but doers also, that we would be the beacon, that we would be the light in this community, in this city, and throughout this nation. Oh, God, if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough. So we just say, uh, every, every, every praise uh, is to our Lord. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord, uh, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Let the church say amen, uh, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Praise his name.
Will you please stand for the reading of God's holy word? Our scripture is taken from Isaiah, the sixth chapter, the verses one through eight. Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, sitting on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were serpents, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their face, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. All at that sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am reunion, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King of the Lord Almighty. Then one of the serpents flew to me with a live, live coal in his hand, which he had taken with thorns from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Amen. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, well. and whom will go for us? And I said, Here am I. <laughs> send me. He said, Go and tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. The word of God for the people of God. May we keep it in our hearts and live with it every day. Last thing I want is you make lemonade. When I, I left the uh, high school with 55 students, and when I came back, the choir was, the numbers were down. And I had one young man, wonderful tenor up there, uh, in the choir. And I said, well, I don't have any basses. I'm going to turn this into a slash gospel choir. So that's what we did. And so here we are. Receive them now. And again, I will say that as they sing, and I'm encouraging them to give your hearts, sing with your, from your hearts to the Lord. We used to say that young folks don't know nothing about going through anything. That ain't the same anymore. These kids are seeing more than we ever did see. So to give them a little bit of some Christ is a wonderful thing. Receive them.
Hallelujah. There's none like him in all the earth. I talked about this last week. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Come on, one more time. much what the Lord has done in an excellent way, in a majestic way.
Hallelujah. Somebody say, he's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn with me now to the book of Isaiah in the sixth chapter. And we want to, we want to look specifically at the eighth verse. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, the eighth verse, where we find these words. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. I want you to pray with me these moments from the subject, send me. Somebody shout, send me. God, we thank you for this amazing, these amazing voices that we've heard. We thank you, God, for all who are a part of this worship experience. But God, we need now to hear a word from you. God, if we don't hear a word from you, we won't know what to do. And so send your word now in the name of Jesus. Open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing on us that it will be so great that we won't even have room enough to receive it. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth, and allow no flesh to glory in your sight. Lord, fix what's wrong, straighten out what is crooked, and lift up what is down. Right now, in the name of Jesus, and God, we honor you, God, we praise you. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said, amen. Send me. Unfortunately, as children of God, we are born into a world that was already created. It is a world that is already preoccupied with a number of things. It is a world that is already satanically saturated and demonically disturbed. We live in a world that comes with all kinds of problems and challenges. However, in the midst of this, God wants us to do our part. God has given each of us a calling and a ministry. God has given each of us some form of marching orders and therefore we've got to do our part. I'm afraid that too many people find themselves whether they're between two pews or sitting in their living room there are people who call themselves chi a child of God but they're not doing anything for God. They're not found or associated themselves with any form of ministry and can I tell you I don't want to hurt your feelings but a person person who walks every day but not in any form of ministry or calling or not doing their part for the Lord is like a person who shows up for work every day but just hangs out in the lunchroom. But I wonder is there anybody here who can say I didn't come to hang out in the lunchroom. No, God been too good to me. I didn't come to hang out in the lunchroom. God has made too many ways for me. I wonder if I have any non-lunchroom saints in the place today who can say I came to give him glory see we if we're going to live in the fullness of God's design we must desperately desire we must have an, we must be unashamedly ready to submit ourselves to some encounters with God that usher his glory into our lives and that's where Isaiah is in this text if you understand Isaiah's ministry and Isaiah's calling you, under, you understand that it's it started out with Isaiah working in the temple. In other words, Isaiah was working in the temple, but he had not met God yet. It's in the text. Isaiah was a worker in the temple, but he had not submitted to God. And somebody may be here today. You might get a certificate today. You might not. But the question is, have you met God? You may be working in the church and you may not, but the question is, are you working for the God? You may have a badge on your left or a badge on your right but the question is 
Are you working for God? See, see, Isaiah was working in the temple. Isaiah had a good church position. Isaiah had a title in the church. Isaiah received a certificate on installation Sunday, but he still had not met the Lord. And so this text helps us to, it helps us to understand what happens when you submit to the will of God. See, God every now and then has to reconstruct some things in our lives in order for us to say yes to God and no to the world. See, this text opens up. I love this Isaiah text. This text opens up and says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. In the year that the king died, I saw the Lord. In the year that I went through something, I saw the Lord. In the year that I had to climb my own mountain, I saw the Lord. In the year where I was just about to give up, I saw the Lord. In the year that I had to deal with unemployment, I saw the Lord. In the year that I had to walk by myself, I saw the Lord. In the year that I had to go through some storms, I saw the Lord. And I wonder, is there anybody here who can say, I saw the Lord. I felt the Lord. I've seen God do some great things in my life. Oh my God, today, he says in this text, he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. If you're sitting next to somebody, say, neighbor, I saw the Lord. I can't tell you about it right now, but I saw the Lord. I can't give you my testimony right now, but I saw the Lord. See, in the year, he says, in the year that King Uzziah died. Now, you got to understand, you got to understand what Isaiah was really trying to say in the text because Isaiah, uh, Isaiah understood that King Uzziah had some problems. King Uzziah began to operate out of order at that time. He went from being kingly to trying to be priestly. So he went from serving in the palace. And King Uzziah tried to take over in the temple. And you do know that any time you start operating outside of your gift, that's when you mess up the Lord's blessing over your life. I need some company in the place today. Whenever you try to operate outside, that's why you got to learn how to stay in your lane. Somebody shall stay in your lane. I don't care how hard it is, stay in your lane. I don't care how deep, stay in your own lane. Don't get in my lane, you stay in your own lane. So he says, he says, I'm trying to get through the unpacking. Be seated, I'm just trying to get through the introduction. He says, in the year that King Uzziah died, in the year that King Uzziah died, Uzziah, Uzziah got out of his lane. And so God became agitated and aggravated to the extent that God allowed him to be, to be afflicted with leprosy. And he allowed Uzziah to die. He, he, Isaiah notes that in that year, uh, in the year that God's distraction died, in the year that God's distraction was removed, I saw the Lord. You do know that every now and then, God says, I've got to subtract some of the distractions in your life because there's some things that don't deserve a place at your table. Maybe, maybe in order for God to set you free, he's got to pull some subtractions and some people out of your life. He's got to expose some things that are pulling you down and draining your joy. He's got to pull some things that are pulling you down and stealing your hope. Every now and then, God says you've been leaning on something that is not able to support you anymore. You've elevated some things to idol status. You started trusting in things more than you're trusting in God. He says, King, in the year that King Uzziah died. In other words, God, God said to Isaiah, I had to move some things so that you would not get so caught up in the blessing that you forget about the blessor. That you not get so caught up in the stuff and the created that you forget about the creator. He says, I got to move some stuff so that you remember Remember where your blessings come from. He says, I got to move some stuff so that you remember who woke you up this morning. He says, I got to move some stuff so you remember who started you on your way. And I wonder, do I have 10 witnesses here who can say, God?
God moves some stuff. That's why I feel like dancing. God moves some stuff. That's why I'm waving my hands. God moves some stuff. That's why I'm giving him glory. God moves some stuff. So he says, he says, says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I felt the presence of the Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, I felt the presence of a living God. Here he was going through a very rough year, but it was in that same year that he felt the presence of the Lord. And somebody came to church this morning. You might feel depleted, discouraged, or depressed, but I want you to keep your head up today because it's in the year that 20, of 2023 that you're going to see the Lord. You're going to see the Lord open some doors. You're going to see the Lord heal the sick. You're going to see the Lord turn sickness around. You're going to see the Lord turn cancer around. You're going to see the Lord turn divorce around. Is there anybody here who can say, I'm ready to see it? In fact, open up the floodgates because I'm ready for a blessing. I'm ready for a miracle. I'm ready for breakthrough. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, let's not keep you too long. I don't have three points today. I just have two. I just have two today. I hope you, I hope you don't mind. There are just two things that come out of the text. Look at Brother Jesse. He smiled all sermon long. I got him on that, though. There are two things that come out of the... He even unfolded his legs for a few seconds. Come on, y'all help me up in here. There are two things that come out of the text. The first thing, the first thing, the first thing to come out of the text is that you can't, you can't... Stay with me now. Come back, come back. The first thing to come out of the text is that you can't clean up what you're not willing to confess is a mess. Ooh, I think I'm preaching better than they shouting today. You can't clean up what you're not willing to confess is a mess. Somebody have a mess going on somewhere in your life? See, sometimes God will orchestrate some moments in our lives where, where we actually have to clean up some of the mess in our lives. I know, I know we don't like to talk about sin in the church anymore. I know we don't like to talk about hell anymore, but I tell you, just as true as hell is real, sin is real. And we cannot pacify sin by going along every day saying, I'm a work in progress. The devil is a lie. You can't keep doing in 2023 what you did in 1991, talking about the Lord is working on you. It don't take the Lord that long to fix somebody. It doesn't take the Lord that long to clean up somebody it doesn't take the Lord that long to turn somebody around come on Holy Ghost God God is just not that slow so I'm, somehow somehow be seated I'm still in the first point be seated now brother Jesse might cross them legs again and so and so he says he says he says in the year King Uzziah died see somehow somehow we've become a generation that's figured out how to manage morality in a somewhat flimsy way. We believe that our religion is negotiable and we can be one way in church and we can be something else when we leave here. But we've got to be the same on Monday that we are on Sunday. I believe, I believe, I mean, if you've looked at the news this week, and you saw that tragedy in Memphis. I'm so glad that they had cameras, they had body cameras that showed the truth of what really was going on. But I wonder, can you be the same on camera that you are off camera? Can you be the same in a sanctuary that you are in the lunchroom? I wonder, can you be the same up in here that you are when you get out there? Because you can't sing on Sunday and cuss me out on Monday. That's that, that's something wrong with that. You got to. You got to confess your mess. You can't come to Quinn Sunday after Sunday and leave the same way you've been living. You can't come here Sunday after Sunday, Brother Kendall, and become comfortable with where you are. But God is a God of change. Can I get a witness up in here? I don't know about you, but I don't want to live a life that is trifling, trivial, or trite. But I want to be what God would have me to be. I want to be holy and acceptable. I want to be what God has called me to be. 
and do what God has called me to do. And I just believe, I believe in grace. I believe in the power of grace. But can I tell you, grace is like renting while obedience is like purchasing. I said something, but y'all didn't help me with it. I'm picking, I put it down. I want you to pick it up. I'll go back and get it again because sometimes they tell me I talk too fast. And so let me come back and get it again. Grace is like renting while obeying is like purchasing. You can rent, but you don't have any equity. You can rent, but you don't have much ownership. But I stopped by here to tell you that when you obey, that's when God opens the floodgates. In other words, at some point, we've got to realize that this is about relationship. This is about character. This is about integrity. This is about being who God called us to be. And I don't know about you. I don't want to just be a good man. I want to be a good Christian man. I don't want to just be a soldier. I want to be one of God's soldiers. I want to be what God has called me to be. Can I get away? I want my life to pass the test. I want my I want to have such integrity. I want to have such power in the blood in the blood of Jesus that even if a mosquito mosquito bites me he'll walk or he'll fly away singing there's power in the blood I want to have such power that I get up with power I'm walking in power I'm talking in power is there anybody up in here who can say I'm determined to have power I believe it was I believe it was Tremaine Hawkins who first sang a change a change has come over me Isaiah knew something about a change because he had an encounter and it changed him. It changed him to the point, let's go back to the text, where it says, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. See, God is not the, I see, every now and then, we've got to recognize that we're not as holy as we wish we are, as we try to portray we are. Uh, he, we are not all that we ought to be. Sometimes we're prone to engage in activity that is against the will of God. Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. Isaiah looked at himself and what he saw disturbed him. And he said, God, I've got to do better. God, I've got to be better. God, I need your help. And you've not really had an encounter with God until you got into the presence of God and recognized that you're not all that in a bag of Lay's potato chips. You've not really had a connection with God. You've not really had a moment with God until you recognize, I've got work to do. I still need some help. I still need some cleaning. I still need some cleansing. And that's why I love the first Sunday, because what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus see God showed you you and when he showed you you that's when you recognize you need a change in your life you need a change in your in your finances you need a change in your what you're going through and if we could be honest we need to say God I need you to work on me I need you to work with me because my situation is not bringing you glory as it should God I'm doing things that I know you're not pleased with God, I'm doing things that I know are not according to your will. And so, God, I need you to clean me up. I don't want to keep going around here with a spirit of unforgiveness. I don't want to leave church with hatred in my heart. I don't want to leave here not speaking to people. I don't want to leave here mean and nasty like I walked in here today. But, Lord, I need you to clean up some things because we're all a work in progress. Can I get six witnesses here? who can say I'm still under construction the Lord please be patient with me God is not through with me yet but when God gets through with me I shall come forth as pure gold I tell you I preach as an imperfect preacher to some imperfect people but God is still working on us can I get a witness in here I don't care if you talk in tongues or talk in circles the Lord is still working on you I don't care if you can quote the Bible from Genesis to Revelation God is still working on you. I don't care if you get a certificate or you get a little badge. God is still working on you. I don't care if you got here early or you walked in a little late. God is still working on you. Is there anybody here who can say, work on me, God? I need some help. Work on me, God. I need a turnaround. Work on me, God. And so the Bible says, the Bible says in verse 6, then the angel came and 
The angel touched Isaiah. Verse 7 says, he touched my mouth and he took my guilt away. In other words, he cleansed me up because, and once he cleansed me, uh, Isaiah said, I was able to make a confession. And every now and then you just got to tell the truth on your own self. I mean, while you're busy in everybody else's business, trying to run everybody else's life, you got to work on your own life because why point everybody else to heaven and your situation is going to hell in a handbasket. I knew I would freeze up some amens right in through here, but he did not say God fix her. He did not say God fix him, but he said, Lord, fix me. And so the Bible says, it starts out by saying that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. So he, it caused him to have a confession. And his confession it led to cleansing. But then the second thing, and I'm through, is that your confession and cleansing will give you clarity of God's call. Your confession and cleansing will give you clarity of God's call. See, all of a, man, all of a sudden, a man who thought he was doing right, a man who thought he had it going on, a man who thought he was all of that, he found out I still have work to do. And here's what happens in the text. God asks a rhetorical question because you do know that there's nothing that God doesn't know because there's nowhere where aware where God is not and so God cannot ask a question that God does not already have the answer to God asked a rhetorical question he said who shall I send and who shall go for me see I always looked at this text but I looked at it through the wrong lens because God didn't ask Isaiah to respond God made a blanket statement because God wanted to find out who would respond and Isaiah answered the calling. Well, I wonder, do you have an Isaiah anointing today? You're saying, if you can use anybody, Lord, you can use me. God, I may not be all the, altogether perfect, but you can use me. I may not be dotting every I and crossing every T, but Lord, you can still use me. And so Isaiah said, God, I'll go. But here's what's deep. See, some of us have been living life out of order of the assignment. We've been doing what benefits us and helping us but Isaiah recognized this is not about me this is about doing what God has called me to do this is about recognizing that if God before me who can be against me this is about recognizing that my time my life my family my finances my future they're all in the Lord's hands and therefore I can't walk around like everything I have belongs to me no everything I have belongs to God my house belongs to God my car belongs to God my family belongs to God. Where my bank account belongs to God. Everything I, anybody with me today, everything I have belongs to God. And so God, he had an encounter with God that restructured his life to the point where he had to let go some things. So he said that in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. In the year that my distraction was removed, I saw the Lord. Well, I want you to keep on trusting God because God will be, God can blow your mind. God can do amazing things when you put your hands in the hands of God. God will take you places that you never thought you could go. God will boost up your GPA like never before. God will put your feet on straight street if you trust in him. Uh, and don't sit there like God has never blown your mind. Don't you dare sit there like the Lord hadn't opened up some windows for you and made a way for you. Has God ever blown your mind? I mean when the odds were stacked against you and you didn't know how you were going to make it. Did the Lord blow your mind? I wonder, is there anybody here who can say, I've had some, so some tears and sorrows. I've had some questions for tomorrow. There were times when I didn't know right from wrong, but in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials only come to make me strong. I want you to keep on keeping on because God has planted a ministry in side of you. You can't stay on the sideline. You can't stay in the dugout. You can't sit between two pews Sunday after Sunday and do nothing and say nothing. But if God has called you to do something, it's time to get up and be about our father.
father's business. It's time to get up and be about our father's business. Can I get a witness here? It's time, it's time. Now I'm through today. Uh, God bless you real good. But I want to tell somebody, because somebody's under the sound of my voice and you're saying preacher I'm, I'm trying to walk in my calling but I'm discouraged these days I'm trying to walk in my calling but I feel unappreciated these days I'm trying to walk in my calling but they didn't make me a certificate I'm trying to walk in my calling but I, they don't know what I'm going through I'm trying to walk in my calling well can I close with a story today because I don't want you to get weary in well doing because the Bible says don't get weary in well doing because in due season you will reap if you faint not well I got to close with a story you still with me Carissa let me close with a story the story is told of Derek Redman Derek Redman you know, some of you may remember Derek Redman Derek Redman played in the 1992 Barcelona games at while running of the race he raptured his hamstring he fell down on the track while the rest of them just kept running past Derek he was down there on the track. He mustered up the strength to get up and keep on running so, uh, while he was struggling and hobbling and hobbling and struggling, struggling and hobbling and hobbling and struggling. There was a commotion up in the crowd. There was a commotion in the crowd. Finally, a man made his way down to the racetrack, helped Derek Redman, put his arms around Derek Redman and helped him to get on to the, to the finish line. After the race was over, the media went crazy, trying to figure out who in the world that man was who had the audacity to come down there with a t-shirt come down there on the track oh, only to find out when they when they got to him and interviewed him they said who are you he said I'm his father he said well what business do you have thinking you can make it down to this racetrack he said well I saw my son struggling and I wasn't gonna let him struggle by himself oh, come on let me get you today is there anybody here who can say I'm gonna keep on running might I have to run by myself. I'm gonna keep on running. May have to sing by myself. I'm gonna keep on running. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody's standing. I don't feel no waste time. Come too far from where I start from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far. If you're standing on your feet, maybe you've had a Derek Redmond moment where you were out there trying to run the race, but you ruptured your spiritual hamstring and you fell down. Maybe you're here today and you want to renew your relationship with God. If you're here today and you don't have a church home or you're looking for a church home, maybe you want to unite with a body of believers I encourage you to come today, wherever you are. I don't feel, come on, let's give God some praise. I come too far, too far from where I started. Is there another today? Nobody told me, nobody told me that the road, come on, they still coming. Oh, I don't believe he brought me is there another today come on let's give God some praise I don't, I don't you feel God speaking to you I invite you to come now the doors of the church are open come too far too far from where I started from some praise he brought me this far to lead is there another today God is waiting on you I don't come too 
far, too far from where I started from. Come on, let's give God some praise. They're still coming. Y'all done stop clapping, but the Lord is still sinning. I don't believe, don't believe. He brought me this far. I don't believe. He brought me. You may be seated in the presence of our God. He brought me this far. I don't believe. He brought me. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Don't believe it. Let me hear you say, I know. He brought me this far. I don't believe. Yeah. He brought me this I far. Don't believe. I don't believe. Don't believe. Don't believe. He brought me this far. I don't believe. He brought me this far. Pastor Covington, congregation, good morning. God is good. Yes, he is. We have the son of Mr. and Mrs. Carl Smith. His name is DeAndre Smith. And he is coming to recommit his life to Christ. Yeah. And here on my right is Miss Patricia Walker. This is Miss Patricia Walker. She's transferring from Zion Global here in Cincinnati. Amen. And this is Miss Stephanie Blunt. She is the daughter of our own Reverend Blunt. And she's coming on her Christian experience. Amen. Do you, do you believe that Jesus Christ died and rose that you might have a right to the tree of life. Do you believe that? Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to meet us in the library immediately following worship. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us prepare to give. Let us prepare to give. If you were not here last Sunday, we want you to double up. Somebody say up. So you get a double blessing. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Bless every gift and every giver. Help us to give according to your word, because your word says if we just trust you with 10%, you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we won't have room to receive. Bless us, God, in the city and in the field. Bless us when we come and when we go. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said amen.
Amen. Come on, let us stand all over the sanctuary. Let's give this choir a hand. Come on, let's praise God. Come on, I want you to really praise God for this choir. I hope that they will come back again. They have blessed Quinn Chapel today. Amen. And they look good up there too, don't they? All things come of thee, O oh Lord. be seated in the presence of our Lord. Now, let's give our ushers a hand. Let's give our ushers under the leadership of Sister Carmen. Let's give them a hand. Sister Kim, you gonna miss your certificate. Oh, you coming back? Kendall, you gonna miss your certificate. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did y'all hear him? No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We used to sing a song in vacation Bible school when I was a child, just a few years ago. <laughs> smile, Miss J. You ain't smiled all worship yet. And the song said, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. 